good morning good afternoon good night it depends your time and your location you are joining us today at eastern news 24. i seen the by kankonye chibi yes hello all right um Peter B don't give it water water again to tunubu also we are instead of wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Uh, because the guy say hotel here. All right, I'm not going to be fair. Pito B, the Pito B reaction on the Tunubu government and hardship over the nation. It gets here beef. If he may not be to say a bozzy, who moon nine does away in here. Here go. Make sure you share it so that it's going to reach many of our audience and many of our people out there. All right, Diki, you can see a beef. Don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe once again this is eastern news 24. all right over to you sir in the morning we buried we are all either swallowed by snakes <laughs> pythons um doctors monkeys of this that's why we are now in, in this uh, new song of the world we say maybe you put the money the other man to you follow the egg money because you now goes to parties oh b Oh, be importer and exporter. We go teach people be a lesson. Now, statistics we go chop. Hmm. They even went ahead and keep lying to themselves, saying, even if my Peter will be, be the president of Nigeria, what we the first now? All this hardship would have been like 100 times. My people, the day we will start telling ourselves the truth about this country called Nigeria, that will be the beginning of our liberation. My people, in this particular video, people will be scattered the table. Yes, so hey, hey. most of the times people will say we should not be blaming Tunubu because he is not the cause of the problem we are facing right now. But people will be said it here, ho ha, that if there is anyone we're supposed to be blaming concerning what Nigerians are facing right now, the person should be Tunubu because he is the one that they declared president. My people. Make I know waste your time. Let me allow you guys so that I can listen and hear everything His Excellency, Mr. Pito B, said in this particular video. But before then, please, if today is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe for more updates. Like this video so that YouTube will recommend it to other people to watch and also share the video so that people will get the opportunity to watch as well. Thanks so much for doing so. So now, uh, Mr. B. You have been involved in the wilderness during the 2023 campaign. How now it's been wasted by people in government? Here at New Central TV, we have had a look at the 2024 budget. And there are parts of it that give grave concerns about where the taxpayers' money is going. Have you had a look at the budget? And does it worry you the amount of money that is going to agencies that look like they're going to filter away taxpayers' money? I have, and I have several times raised concern, grave ones about the budget. I've sent messages about it. If you follow me up on Twitter, you will see where I have complained severally. Even when the senator, one of them alleged that there were three trillion pardon, I did make a humble appeal that that budget be taken back and looked at to ensure that the lessons are there. Because you could see it clearly that the budget, and I'll give you a few examples which are violated. The budget of say National Library, a country the size of Nigeria does not have a National Library. To date, we have the National Assembly trying to build its own library for about 15 billion naira. When the budget of National Library is about 1 billion, that is where the whole nation, and I'm sure the amount of their own library collectively, if we put all the universities together, will be. We have budget of again National Assembly Clinic being 15 billion naira. When if you put together the entire teaching hospitals, which is in quotes, the half.
height of our healthcare, if you put teaching hospital of our famous universities, the Bible, Osoka, University of Nigeria, Amadou Bolo, Lagos, is less than the budget of the capital budget. Is less than the budget of National Assembly Clinic. I can go on and on. The Ministry of Science as a ministry, the entire capital budget is about six billion. When the budget of the car park of House of Rep and the Senate is about six billion. So the priority of the government is to create car it's park and to be on the In today's system. And it's the same that the pattern in which they said is the road to have not become a reality. Because if you go where you are not seen in places of like national space research revenue agency and you now see 80 million for those beans in our year 80 million for sensitization of unwanted pregnancy 170 million for sensitization for tenders on peace and coffee resolution in space agency so the space is what we got to do with traditional rulers. You can believe it. You now see where we have about 300 million over a national news agency of Nigeria for tricycles and school renovation. So and you can go on and on and on and see things like that. And you ask yourself, how did we come here? Like I have always said, government needs to prioritize our small resources in key development areas, which are health, education, and per capita, bringing people out of poverty. And these areas are not getting enough support. If you talk about your health care, the most important part of your health care is your primary health care. That is the foundation. We have today overtaken India in infant mortality, 7,000 population, and the, the capital budget of our primary health care for the whole nation is about 59 billion. The cost of our provincial jet at 100 million is about 160 billion. That is three times our primary health care. And this is not the only private jet that the president. No, has. I just see you know, the new one. They said it's 100. We don't know the actual figure because they need to reconfigure it and everything. So when you say they need to reconfigure it, are you suggesting the numbers are being massaged? I don't know what is happening because nobody knows. We now live in an area where nobody knows what is happening. All we know is that we wake up in the morning, they tell you, we've got these new cars, nobody. That is why I keep saying we must go back to the parliamentary system of governance. Even if we have to maintain the presidential system, we have to include where everything has to be explained. But when you say parliamentary, you know that the constitution of Nigeria says it's a presidential system. Are you by any means suggesting that there is a need, to, or you are suggesting and supporting those who say there is a need for a national conference when we decide a new constitution for Nigeria? The way we govern Nigeria, not just the new constitution, the way we move as a country. Hmm. Yes, I support that, but then we need to also have we can keep, even if we keep the presidential, there must be a, a bit of tweak to the parliamentary system where it will be properly explained all these expenditures because the waste is incredible. 
what we are going through man is never imagined. So how do you constitutionally, and I know you have never said or claimed to be a lawyer, but when you look as a politician who's been in the political domain in Nigeria for many years, uh, how do you think it's going to be possible for Nigeria to have a constitution that says this level of wastage is not acceptable and this number of minister is, or ministers in Nigeria and assistants and special assistants and senior special assistants will no longer be constitutional? How do you think that can be factored in? I don't think it's a constitutional thing. I mean, constitution that's going to be, because constitutional now, what we have is not what it should be. The constitution says one minister per state. So, 36 ministers. We have 40 something. So, it's a constitution. Should that be adjusted to maybe about 20 or even 16? No, it's a leadership problem. It's a leadership problem. It's getting leaders that are conscious of the fact that the, our resources has to be prioritized in key development areas that makes a difference. It has really, 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 yes, we need to treat the constitution for what I said earlier, but today what you need is you need competent leaders that have compassion and are dedicated to prioritizing the resources of the government to key development areas which are health, education, pulling people out of the, securing the country, making sure things work. The cost of governance that we waste today is criminal and unaccepted. Nigeria has more federal ministers than the United States of America. How do you begin to comprehend and understand why we need so many? Would you suggest that if you were to become the president of Nigeria at some point in the future, you will definitely reduce the number of ministers to how many? How many ministers do you think Nigeria needs? For me, I will stay within the constitution. But I can tell you the cost of even keeping them and the waste across all the government will be drastically reduced. So, Forget about what the Constitution say. If you were to have your way, and you were to use logic and simple common sense, does common sense say that we need 36, despite the fact that the, uh, the uh, Constitution say it's 36? Do you think we need I have 36? to look at what they are going to contribute. I have to look at their productivity. What is this they are going to do? Just like I always said, it is just not the number of people, what are they doing? If they are required and they have something they do, yes. But that what they are doing will be measurable. People have to feel it and know why they are engaged. Okay, what, what I'm really trying to pin you down to tell me is, if you have your way and you have executive order that gives you permission to choose how many ministers you want to work with, would you like to have 6 or 10 or 20 or just say 36 is the number, I am happy to work with 36? Thank you very much. I will tell you exactly what I'm going to use here, but I will go beyond the constitution. So what do you say to the current government that has gone beyond the constitution by having more than 36 uh, ministers? They should stick to the constitution and do the right thing. Because that's the basis of which the government. That is the what they swear or to keep. The oath is to respect and keep the constitution. So you live within it. That is actually the essence of what you do. So would you call the action of the current government and the support that they've got from the National Assembly, would you describe it as illegal and unconstitutional? Yes it is. Because you're not working with the constitution. You have to work with the constitution. That is your body. That's the you want to swear an oath to keep. You cannot swear an oath to obey this and do otherwise. It's something that is happening. When you are talking about issues of mismanagement of resources, corruption, everything, you're going out of 
the court is not about. Okay, so let, let's move on very quickly because I know we have very little time to go through all the issues that affect uh, the state of the nation. Now, the budget in Nigeria, of Nigeria in the last eight years has consistently been very low on investment in the area of agriculture. You spent a few days recently in Rwanda and um, a paltry sum of 1.5% to less than 2% of our budget is going to agriculture uh, that provides about 20% of the GDP consistently over the last 10 years. What is your feeling about this and what kind of number do you think this government should be looking at in terms of percentage of the 20, 23, 25 trillion naira that is being budgeted for the entire nation? How much do you think should be going to agriculture and why? Well, let me even... You were even generous to them to say it's about 1.5. I don't think it's about 1.5 because the budget of agriculture this year is 362.9 billion, oh, 363 billion, and the entire budget is about 28 point something, so it's about 1.3 trillion. So you're generous by giving them more. But for me, let me go back to my question on agriculture. Is to say that the, the two most critical areas in Nigeria that requires that is actually giving us the crisis is personal insecurity and food insecurity. And by solving food insecurity, you would have done a lot in dealing with personal or human insecurity. Because today, from the all records, you have that 8 million people on the verge of extreme hunger. And you have huge number of your poverty capital of the world. So by going to deal with food insecurity, you're going to invest in agriculture, which will solve hunger, which is one of your biggest crises today. Be 109 out of 120 something countries measures hungriest country. You're going to solve your hunger. You're going to create a real job. Because you'll see it as the biggest in terms of GDP contribution. It's actually the same thing in employment. So you're going to solve the issue of unemployment because it's going to employ more people. It's going to help you, your industries, because they have raw materials to process. The entire value chain is agriculture, processing, marketing, and of course, to the guests to be table where people eat. So, you're going to be dealing with that entire value chain, which will create jobs. It's going to help you to deal with the issue of inflation. Because the biggest contributor to inflation today, negatively, is food inflation. By having more food, you're going to bring it down. You're going to be saving money you use in the production of food products, again, helping your foreign exchange stability. And even your export is going to help you to do So, if everything about agriculture is a win win. That you need to invest aggressively on it. Because by putting people out of poverty and everything, you reduce the criminality and all that. For me, areas of agriculture, which deals with the third issue of development, putting people out of poverty, health and education will receive no less than 10% each of the budget. And it's important. But if you look at what we have said about agriculture, if you look at your agriculture today, with a budget of 263 billion naira, in fact, out of that 363 billion, the actual thing that you're investing is 252.8, about 253 in capital budget. 
by the time you add 160 for new jet, 21 billion for UVP house, 15 billion for library of uh, National Assembly, 15 billion for their clinic, and all other furnishings. You find out you are talking about 250 something billion for the entire country for to solve issue of hunger. In fact, your you overhead for the entire agricultural ministry is less than 10 billion. Okay. Which is about The money you have spent about fifty percent of the money you spent just in housing the vice president. So tell me, Nigerians are saying that all politicians are the same. In just a few minutes ago, you were invited to our newsroom, and you told uh, the young journalists, all of them that work for News Central. You told them that the problem of Nigeria is not Nigeria, it is politicians. That is the problem of Nigeria. So nobody should be praying for Nigeria, they should be praying for our politicians. Now that brings me to this question that a lot of Nigerians are asking about our politicians. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria decided that he wanted to make the National Assembly members happy by providing them brand new vehicles that cost a whopping sum that is the dream of so many Nigerians, but they just could never touch. There is not one member of the National Assembly that rejected this vehicle, not even members of Labour Party in the National Assembly. What does that tell you about the quality and caliber of human beings that are called Nigerians that are in the National Assembly? If you recall when I, when I mentioned to the young ones, very energetic, hardworking young ones, in this facility, I said that we are the problem. I mean, they exclude myself. I said, we, the politicians, are the problem. I didn't exclude myself. And I was, I was um, discussing with somebody yesterday, and I said to him, I read philosophy. I mean, first of all, a, a topic called syllogism. And it says that when you have over 75%, you can't generalize without committing fallacy of generalization. In Nigeria, 95% of the politicians are the same. So the 5% will remain very negligible. What we are saying is that we get one, that will say, okay, I want somebody to confront me and say, okay, Peter, you wasted energy and time and you saved money. And when you were leaving government, you left a huge amount of money. So tell me, which price do you get from doing that? Every other person took money and they enjoyed themselves today. You said you don't want to take the pension given to you as governor. So what difference does it make? You would have had a house in Abuja, house in Morocco, government is maintaining you. So it is a general thing of uh, greed. That's why I always say this is a criminal entity. You have hijacked the criminals. The only way it can work is to dismantle it. But I know that if you have a leadership that can govern with determination, it can dismantle it. I've been a state governor, and I know what you mentioned with the National Assembly is not the buying of the vehicle, but the impact on the society is far worse. Tell me how you can have the National Secretary of National University Commission recently 
so that Nigerian universities are in urgent need of PhD holders. Okay, they ask myself, who wants to be a PhD holder? If you become a PhD holder, you are employed as a graduate assistant level two or so in university. Your salary is over fifty thousand naira. Let me be generous and give you two hundred thousand. That means in one year you earn two point four million. Let's say it's two point five million. Two point five. If you decide as a PhD holder with 2.5 million naira salary, salary to buy the car they've given to somebody whose only qualification in secondary school, it will take you 64 years. So, so why will anybody want to be a PhD holder? The level of criminality amongst our politicians is a disincentive to people for, who want to for, study. Is, when we talk about corruption, the reason why, because this is corruption, the reason why it is bad for society is that corruption kills entrepreneurship. Nobody thinks in a corrupt country. I said every day. Why will I work hard to create a business and suffer to grow the business where I can make more money for being a politician? So you don't see people struggling to do business. Corruption kills professionalism. Why am I going to work hard to MPAD, decide to be a professor? Because what I told you now, the professor is able to sell at 400,000 if he's paid. Why will I struggle to be a professor? In fact, if you're a professor, your salary, like I said, is 400000 monthly, 4.8, so call it 5 million annual. For four years, without spending your money, you earn 20 million as a professor. One month salary of every assembly member is 21 million. Why do you want to be a professor? So, corruption kills the entrepreneur, kills the economy. So, would you, advise the president to do, would you advise the president to do what he has done to the Supreme Court by increasing by 300% all universities? Yeah, I'm going to, for me as president, we're going to dismantle this criminality. Everybody has to come at the same level and we discuss the future of the country. And I say it's not that Kevin. This is something that is verifiable. I was governor of a state. I was impeached within six months. You know that. Mm -hmm. I've been a governor. And what was the problem? My own office as governor, there was a budget to renovate my office because it was bought. The budget to renovate it was 298 million. I spent 42 million 300,000. That was my number one offense. Number two offense was that in my launch, where I lived as governor, the entire budget was also bought because I had a crisis for The budget to renovate the vision was 486 million. I spent 81 million in doing everything. That was my number second offense. Number th the third offense was. But I was saving money. Everybody knew, you can go to Sudan very far. When I came, when I became governor, no permanent secretary in Ananda State had a car. No judge had a car. And I said, no. I went to Pijo. Still on record that I was about the highest a number of PGN above by government when I was governor. I went there and said, supply of 50 vehicles, 406. And in my first year, for four years, 
The vehicle I use that's going on is the 406. Permanent secretary, everybody was using the same car. 406 for the four years in my first summer. You can go, these are things that you can go and verify. And we shut down. Shut down the office of first lady. Because they have no more than what some of my ministers. I said, hey, what do you mean? What is this? Nobody voted this way. My wife, we are love her. We live in the same house. But he didn't campaign, nobody voted for her. He should have had his own, her own convoy, even with ambulance and everything, creating additional confusion. That it was so supposed to exist. We shut it down. Let me go back to the budget. Uh, budget that was initially proposed as 27.5 trillion, while 28.7 trillion was passed by the National Assembly and signed by the President. Who do we blame for those situations where we are bleeding money for every questionable things while our debt continues to skyrocket and we're struggling with high fuel costs, high food costs, high inflation, and people are saying we are hungry? Where do we put the blame? Squarely on the bar who is in charge. President Bala Ahmed Tinubu. Period. Nobody else. He is the man voted for. He is the man they declared winner. Why did you say they declared him winner? <laughs> well, that's the most he was declared winner. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so. He is the one who is responsible. Mm. No other person. As I told you, I was impeached. Because I was, in, I was the man they elected. That's why I can abolish first the office, abolish the office. And I mean that I'm going to change this place. And it can do that. Comfortably. Look at our debt. Rising irresponsibly. God, it was never wrong in borrowing. Borrowing for any government globally is accepted. People make reference with every other country today. I've compared so many countries with the issue of borrowing. Even countries with the sites like Singapore. Singapore today owns over 100% of their GDP. But they have a clear law that all borrowed money must be for investment. Mm. Japan owns over 200% of their GDP in debt. Okade, the money Japan borrowed, most of their debt, apart from being domestic, were used for the economy and the people of Japan. And then today, the highest order of US treasuries up until maybe two years ago, I don't know. China, every other person have huge debts. But you could see where those debts were invested in. Today, we are the number three highest debtor to World Bank. What happened within the past one year? We actually estimated that the way we are going, we should be number one. How is that? The projection is that we will have a, more than 150 trillion. A country, and we don't need to show for it. Can they come like Bangladesh? Is within those three highest debtors of World Bank. But can they see the difference? It is very clear. In 2015, let me go back for that. 2015, when this APC government started, our debt was a third of what it is today. We are now over 100 and something billion dollars. We are now in a situation where we can't explain what happened, but just look at a country like Bangladesh. In 2015, they had huge debts with a GDP of 195 billion and per capita of about 1,300. Today, Bangladesh, as a 2023, is with a GDP of over 400 and 60 billion dollars with a per capita of over 2,500.
far from bread. Nigeria in 2005 had a GDP of over 2,500 billion with per capita of over 2,500. Today, a per capita mm. is just about a little bit over a thousand. Okay. That is the crisis you face. And we have tripled our debts. That means the money we borrowed were all either swallowed by snakes, <laughs> pythons, um, motors, among all of this. That's why we are now in, in this uh, new song of the world. Where we say, let me put the money, the other part of you, follow the end the money, because you now go to parties. Because they could see me a shut down. I'm a state governor's lodge in Abuja. Everybody knew. Because government of Canada doesn't live in Abuja. And we couldn't afford to be keeping it. They know that. I shut down the provincial lodge in Abuja. For you, I said, no, the government doesn't live in Abuja. So you recommend the same thing for all the governors in 36 states who have, a lot of them are actually living in Abuja and not in their states. Why are you there? I would recommend that when you finish government, you should live in that state. Not just to, even after I live in Nigeria. The only place I have the house today in Nigeria that is built by me that is my own is Onicha. If you see any other one anywhere, confiscate it and take it. I live in Nigeria in my house. Okay. Everybody so, knows. All right. Let's move very quickly. The recent fuel subsidy removal has stirred significant public debate. What would you have done differently? Because I remember you did say that. From day one, you say subsidy is gone. I wonder if you have done that. I didn't say from day one. I said oh, I would have subsidy it. You know? I didn't say from day one. And I would have done it from day just one. Uh, on my announcement. Okay. I said, go with my manifesto. But I have to first remove the criminality associated with the subsidy. Because the criminality was over 50% of the subsidy. And after removing it, we would have been able to prevent a return cost to Nigeria. And replacing it with an alternative. What happens here is that people are ready to sacrifice. And they're sacrificing. No, but you can't ask people to fast when you're 60. Everybody has to fast at the same time. So you cannot be in the party and join yourself in the media and everything. Going around with you, just and yours and everything at the expense of the public. That is not leadership. Are you claiming that uh, President Bola Mertinubu is not giving leadership to Nigeria today? You can't buy New York, New York. You can't buy yachts. You can't be renovating houses of vice president. Where did the Sudan go live? Mm. People can live in their houses and govern Nigeria. Where did they live? When I, when I have no, no place to live in Oka as a governor, I ask them, don't you have any other governor house? They said there's a small three bedroom house. I said, no, Anicha. I want to live in Anicha. I was in Nigeria for the one year. I asked everybody in another state. I live in Nigeria. On the Kaoka is 30 minutes. On the way able to do the new, and where we do it and maintain it, and when I was governor, throughout the year I was governor, I live in a three bedroom house. Because Diamond Street, where the British Prime Minister lives, is four rooms. Four rooms. For an economy that is 10,000 our economy. More than the capital in the UK is about forty thousand dollars. The capital in Nigeria is one thousand up to five percent of that. So if I were to put you on the top of a roof to say scream to Mr. President Bola Metinumbu, what would you be saying to him about the idea of Nigeria and saying the presidency is living large? What would you be saying to him? Please cut the cost drastically. It's too much waste. Why do we have a solar clinic being built for 22 billion naira? When your national clinic, your number one hospital, have less than 2 billion? 
it takes from from Asok to National Clinic is not, not can be more than five kilometers. So while the clinic, when Trump had problem, they didn't take him to White House Clinic. They took him to the military hospital where every other person, when there is just a hard COVID, they took him to hospital where you can go. It's hospital. Why are we always doing what is wrong? Okay. You just want to die. There are ambulance all over the place. Even when he's losing, kidding the ambulance. There is ambulance. We don't have to go. So, if anything happens, the ambulance will take him to the next hospital. Yeah, excellent. Should yeah. actually be there. Yeah, okay. You call the Nigerians to demand transparency from the NNPCL regarding fuel subsidy matters. One more reason would you suggest to ensure this transparency and accountability? What kind of I said it. We have to show what is being removed and what is being applied. You don't know what the subsidy is today. You don't know what is being removed. So what we are saying is, oh, subsidy gone, electricity subsidy gone. Uh, if I did, soon they will remove subsidy on air. If you have the charge, they will charge us for air. But we are not saying we will not do that. But tell us where it's going. Now we are being told there will be increase in VAT, increase in tax, there will be if you see people speaking language like oh Nigerian tax to revenue to GDP is low. Who are you taxing? You have one hundred and thirty million people who are living in poverty, who have no job. Are you going to tax them? Why are they going to pay? They are not eating, so how they pay you tax? Tax is a source of productivity. It's a bank account, you have to put in something before you withdraw. So we want to charge them, but let us put something. What Nigeria want to see today, and what I want to see is let Nigerian politicians start sacrificing. They can no longer continue. Do you hear people speculate about the number of jets that went to even China and other places and everything? We are still enjoying celebrating every day. All right, thank you once again, my country people. They won on the bay. Kefun will you go? Basta makaya be phone on the near Bakuwa. Kefun will you go? No dinku no. Basta makaya be fending in a pit of people. Drop all I feature near our corner. East and use twenty four. Boy, my son, tell me your bunny posy. Joe came back. The buying what I'll be in Kemesian.